Hey guys, welcome to Just A Chat With. I'm your host, Andrew Doby. If this is your first listen, Just A Chat With is a brand and creativity podcast where we talk to the world's best in class. If you didn't catch our last episode, I sat down with Kevin Pike, who is an American film special effects supervisor and screenwriting consultant. He's best known for supervising special effects in the films like Back to the Future, where he built the DeLoreans that you see in the film, and also for painting the shark that you see in Jaws. Go check that one out if you haven't already. Um, before now as well, we've also had some amazing guests such as David Martin, the founder of Fantasy Interactive. We've had Design Matters podcast host Debbie Millman, world-renowned designer Michael Wolfe, as well as branding legend Martin Neumeyer and a whole host of other great people. Today, however, I sat down with the amazing co-founder and chief creative officer at Sid Lee. For those who don't know, Sid Lee is one of the most well-respected and well-renowned creative companies in the world with over a thousand people in the team. Uh, Phil was really generous with his time and knowledge and talked a lot through how he grew that business um, a lot of the lessons that he's learned um, and how he's kept creativity at the culture and the core of the culture of Sid Lee. Um, uh, of course, we asked him about his definition of brand and and, you know, he's got, uh, Phil had a great answer to give. So uh, I hope you enjoy today's episode and we'll see you again soon. So, hey, everyone, welcome to episode 20 of Just a Chat With. I'm Andrew Doby. Today, I'm very excited as we're here with none other than Phil Munier, who's the chief creative officer and co-founder of Sid Lee, one of the world's premier creative agencies with offices in Montreal, Toronto, Paris, New York, Los Angeles, and Seattle. With over 28 years of experience in the industry, Phil has overseen all the creative output for a host of major international clients, including Absolute, Adidas, Starbucks, Red Bull, and many more. As an active member of the creative community, Phil has been invited to chair and serve on the jury panel at various national and international international sorry com competitions, such as Canned Lions International, the DNAD Awards, the Canadian Marketing Awards and Communication Arts. Collaboration is an essential part of Phil's approach to creativity and is especially evident in the culture and ideology at Sid Lee. The agency's core values are based on collectivism uh, and the belief that the group is far stronger than the ind individual. So every idea and opinion is given equal value. The result is an agency where everyone works and plays hard as a team, sharing both the workload and the rewards. Famous for his very zen-like approach to the craziness of running an extremely large creative group, uh, consequences of Phil's love for surfing and yoga, Phil firmly believes that great work comes from happy people and he lives by this motto every day. Phil, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you, and Andrew. Thank you. And uh, for, for anyone that's, you know, this is a video <coughs> podcast and an audio podcast, so anyone that's not watching, can you tell us where you are just now, Phil? Uh, I'm in my shack. I'm in my, my creative, I call it the creative shack because since, uh, since COVID, I got forced to move in the country and, uh, the, we were like so many people in the house. So I got kicked out of the house. So I can't, I went to my, my, my shack here. So I decided this is going to be my, my, my office for the next few months. And, um, I, actually I call it the creative shack because this is my, my space where I, I work all the time and I do some trainings out of this little box here in the yeah. woods. And um, so I call it the creative shack and it's really basic. Everything is there uh, yeah. and it's better to travel everywhere around the world. So I'm really happy here. Ah, uh, good, good. And you know, there, there's obviously been a big transition over the last few months. You know, I, I met you in New York last year, and you know, a big part of your life, you were explaining to me off off camera here that you do a lot of traveling. So, how how are you finding the adapting? Do, are you enjoying it? Do you like this 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 way of working better, or do you you know are you missing the the the, the travel that you usually do? Well, I I have to say, uh, in terms of my personal life, I think it's much better because I was traveling every week, and it's it's really hard to live in airplanes and and, and run around the world, and that's really hard on your body. But at the same time, I realized that it's good to see people. It's good to show up and mean something to people. So I'm missing the, the contact with the people. But in terms of my, my, my life, my personal life, it's much better, I have to say. 
But uh, I, I think it's good. We, we're going to take the good side of COVID yeah. and probably use it in the future. And, um, but I really miss my, my coworkers and I miss my people. And I miss meeting people like you when we met in New York. And I met people all over the world. At, and that creates the community around, around Sydney. Yeah. So this is what I'm missing. Yes, it's true. Yeah. And, you know, I can only imagine, um, you know, for those who don't know, Sidley employs over a thousand people, right? Phil, is that right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And so I'd imagine sort of mobilizing that at the beginning of COVID was, you know, was quite a challenge. Um, You know, can you talk a little bit, talk us through a little bit about that transition and kind of how that went for you guys? Yeah, well, it was a smooth transition, I have to say, because we we used to work remotely and we were using Zoom before. Yeah. And and in terms of all the technology, all the platform, everything was set up. Everything was yeah. set up. So in a matter of like two days, everyone got back home and we all got uh, our computers back online and we were ready to work. I realized that the first few weeks, few months, um, People were able to do the work and, and be more efficient yeah. and, and really be focusing on the work. And so we realized that, yes, we could do good work. Uh, and But the problem is the learning part. The learning yeah. part is that we're not able to learn from each other. We're not able to get inspired by a, co- a co-worker. And that's really sad for the young ones at the agency because the learning part is something that is really, really hard. So that's why I decided to start my Creative Shack. So basically, um, every every week I was going live in this shack, talking about different subjects and, and keeping the conversation between the people. Uh, I, I think that was super good. And then I think the bad part is the culture. The culture, it's something that uh, it's it's hard to build culture out of Zoom. Uh, yeah. Even if we do like Zoom parties and stuff like that, it's not the same. It's not the same. So, no. <laughs> so, so <laughs> culture, culture <laughs> is, is really getting a punch in the face for sure. And yeah. culture at Sidley is, is quite important. Learning, we get there, we could manage with some effort. The work yeah. could be done. The work could be done. Yeah. In, in different stage, yeah. Yeah, and I suppose then, you know, um, Phil, what, what do you think makes a great creative culture? Um, a, a great creative culture, it, it starts from, from the people, the people, because uh, you need to give energy to those people and listen to them. Uh, most of, the, most of the, the big project that we've done at Sidley was uh, that came from the people. That came from people, people, someone knocked to my door one morning, say, hey, Phil, do you have two minutes? I would like to talk to you about an idea. Uh, so it always comes from the bottom up. So if the top wants to listen, you let the bottom go up. And then that's the real culture, the real energy. So you feel that creative energy. And instead of doing a uh, saying, hmm, I'm not sure about this idea, he said, yeah, let's do it. Let's try it, you know? So... We, we, we love the culture of, of doing, and that brings energy. That brings sometimes success, sometimes big, big failure, yeah. but it's, it's always good to celebrate both of them. At Sidley, we celebrate the success. We call it the Rock On Award. So we celebrate the people that go really, really far, works really hard, and we have the Moron Award that we celebrate the failure of the year. Uh, and, and it happens every year and people get nominated and then you receive like an award of the loser of the year. You know? uh, but that's great. That's part of the culture. So yeah. So I, I think it's the energy that we, we, we give and let the bottom go up. That's really important. Yeah. I, and, and, you know, I agree with you that the the difficult part now is, you, you know, often a lot of the learning comes in an agency when you hear conversations, when you see the energy that's going on and you, you can, you can see problems before they come problems, but you can also build on great ideas. And I suppose with, you know, have you found any methods online on, you know, and it's a new way that we have to work to help breed that. Um, you know, you mentioned that you're doing your kind of Creative Shack weekly talks, but is, uh, have you found a way to kind of help people come together and to keep generating, 
those ideas that, you know, they often happen when you pop past someone in a corridor, you know, someone chaps on your door, as you say. But exactly. It, there's almost yeah. like a barrier now, isn't there? Because you've kind of got to, you know, find a space in someone's diary to do that, where you, so you don't get that. Have, have you found any ways of kind of keeping that alive? Uh, well, it's it's funny because usually in the normal world, uh, people pass by you in a hallway and they say, hi, hi Phil. Some people are more shy. Yeah. But uh, now it feels like you could you could slap me anytime you could yeah, call me right. anytime, uh, and what do you think about that? So so the first thing I've done in the beginning was out of those creative shack. I was saying to everyone, if you have a struggle, if you have an idea, if you want to bounce it, if you want to have my point of view, just call me. I'm yeah. there. Just call me. And it was amazing. The first the first week, I was so busy because everyone was calling me. What about this? What about that? It was a bit too much. But um, <laughs> Okay, call me less. Call me less. <laughs> just less. Just less. But it's, it's, it's great to feel that people could connect. Um, yeah. and, it, and it's funny because two weeks ago, every year we have Sidley Day. Sidley Day is the day where we decide... Um, to change the name from Diesel into Sidley because uh, before we used to be called Diesel. And then we had a little problem with the Diesel brand, <laughs> you know, the jeans company. Oh, yeah, uh, just that, that little company, yeah. Little company. Yeah. Um, and um, so we decided at one point to change the name of the agency. So mm -hmm. we invite everyone one morning at the office to show up and drop their business card into a coffin right in the middle of the agency. So yeah, yeah. we said... Goodbye, Diesel. Welcome, Sidley. <laughs> and we said to everyone today, uh, we're going to stay at the office, but we're not going to work. One yeah. rule at Sidley Day, you don't work and we have fun. So okay. we did Sidley Day again this year globally. Mm -hmm. And it was super fun. We had podcasts. We have like uh, treasure hunts around the city. And we had dinner together. We shipped stuff at, at the people's house. We had the Rock On Award. Uh, yeah. We were drunk. We were drunk at eight o'clock at night, <laughs> and we had a great time, and it was fun. So, oh, fantastic, fantastic, yeah. yeah and, and and I suppose you know. Um, Culture, you know, for our agency is something we would really try and focus on and try and nurture the best creative culture we can. And I'm interested to learn from you, Phil, you know, you're, you're running multiple studios, um, you know, and over a thousand people. And as you know, you can't, you know, you can't pick up culture and just place it somewhere. So, you know, how, how do you make sure the kind of Sidley culture lives and breathes in all those different locations with, you know, I would imagine with over a thousand people, you've not met everyone also as well. So how do you make sure the people that join the company understand it? How, how does it live and breathe and how do you control that? Well, that's, that's a really good question because culture, if I had to save one thing at Sidley, it's the culture. It's mm -hmm. the culture. I will run away with my culture. Uh, <laughs> the problem with culture is that you cannot put that in the suitcase and ship it across the ocean and, yeah. and, and hope that it will work. Uh, culture is something that it, you have to live by it. Uh, mm -hmm. And at the same time, you have to be honest that maybe your culture is great, but maybe other people could bring more into that culture. So I realized that if I go to Sidley, Paris, for example, mm -hmm. um, you could feel that you walk into a Sidley office because of the people. Mm -hmm. But you could feel that there's a little bit of Paris culture in there mm. that makes it magic. Uh, same thing when you walk in Toronto. It's a Sidley office, but there's the, the Toronto culture in there. So I always said to people, mm. the Sidley culture... There's probably 50% of it that it's great. The other 50, it's yours to build. Uh, mm -hmm. So so bring your culture in it and make it Sidley. And uh, so every time I, I go to an office, I do creative breakfast in the morning. So I sit down to all the new with all the new people. Yeah. And I have breakfast with them, conversation. They ask me about um, how we build a company and what's the vision uh, we introduce ourselves. We, we talk about our passion. Uh, yeah. So for me, that's really important to meet every new person in the office. Um, so it's my it's part of my routine. It's part of my culture. Yeah, uh, we have a book. We have a book. And it's funny because no one reads the book. Everyone is so lazy. <laughs> no one reads the book. Um, 
but it's 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 good to have something that it's it's it uncover uh and it's it's great to see that so um but culture has to it has to live it has to live through the people but you, yeah you need to give the chance to the the new people to bring that culture in yeah, I love that. Uh, it, it reminds me of, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about culture and I often, often am. And, you know, someone said to me recently that, you know, I think the older way of looking at, you know, culture was like you used to recruit saying, is this person a culture fit? But I think yeah. the point that you're maybe making is like, is this person a culture ad? And, you know, and I think that's a nice way of saying it is that, you know, the the, the culture in your your French <laughs> office or, you know, your, your, they're all going to be different and they all add something unique. And and I think there's something about ideas is that, again, I was talking to someone today is that, you know, the best ideas come from different viewpoints. And and I'm interested to know from you, uh, you know, how much better do you think the creativity gets, the, the, the solutions that you can come up with, with the diverse thinking that you now have, you know? So, you know, as you know, when you start these companies, sometimes it's you and two or three others, and they might be very similar to you. But now you've got this, you know, you've got this mass of, hive mind with different points of view and yeah i suppose i'm interested to to know your well point of view. i i i think it's it's a really good point i i believe that culture the creative culture is always stronger with different ingredients yeah. um and we're lucky because you need to realize that montreal montreal is a french and english community mm -hmm. uh in a small island yeah. In North America, where you have the States <laughs> down there and you have Europe across the ocean. So we yeah. already were already mixed in Montreal because when you meet people from Montreal, they speak English, they speak French. Yeah. Uh, they have different culture background. So already in the DNA of Sidley, we, we were mixed. And yeah. my, my co-founder and business partner in the beginning, Jean-Francois Bouchard, uh, was different from me. That's yeah. another mix. So the, the the first two people at Sidley were totally different. He was a lawyer and I was a designer. So that's yeah. that's a weird mix. But the magic happens in between. That's a great mix. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a great mix. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the the is good. <laughs> but the reality is that when you're 25, you don't know if you're a good lawyer or a good designer. You're, you're, yeah. you're just two high school buddies that we love to hang out together. So. But that's really important. That's really important because uh, good people make good work. And first of over talent whatsoever, you need to be, you need to be a good person. Um, but then uh, when you add uh, differences into the mix, that creates like a very vibrant creative community around Sidley. Yeah. And what I love is that when you put, let's say, an art director from from Brazil with a copywriter from um, Fort Lauderdale in Florida or Miami. Mm -hmm. And then you put a technologist from Sweden and then you put an architect from Montreal or a designer from Montreal. Boom, magic happened. Yeah. Magic happened. And, but it happens in between. And the reason why it happens in between, because we have an open creative culture that it's okay to work with different discipline. It's okay to be different. It's okay to embrace the unknown and be out of the comfort zone. So I, I believe that one of the strongest part of Sidley is the mix of yeah. different, different culture, different people, different discipline, because yeah. we're not an ad agency. We're not an ad agency. We're kind of a, a creative group, a creative community that is very, very, um, bizarre in a way because we, we build brand uh but in 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 the culture the energy it's it's amazing yeah no I, it comes across and you know i can see that it, it's not by accident either it's you know it's been very carefully you know looked after and cared for and um is, is that now your role as, as you know obviously at the size and scale you are you know i'd love to know kind of what a day-to-day -day looks like and what your you know your priorities and what your responsibilities are now but I have to say the last few months, uh, it's weird because everything changed, everything yeah. changed because my, uh, my job, uh, at Sidley is to manage good people, yeah. manage good work and manage good money. Yeah. Uh, a few months ago, the triangle kind of flipped around <laughs> and suddenly, yeah. uh, all the focus was on the money, but yeah. then the day after it was on the people. And yeah. then, oh no, we need okay. to talk about the work. And, and <laughs> yeah. 
So, yeah. so my my role as as creative leader at Sidley, the first thing is to manage the good people. Uh, yeah. For me, it's really important that we have the best talent in the world that we take care of them. But it's not easy sometimes because you need to manage career. Yeah. Uh, and if you have an amazing creative that starts his career at Sidley at 21 or 22, 25, it's not the same creative when he's going to be 35 or 40 or 45. So, so my, my first job is to manage the good people, then to manage the good work. Uh, and because without the good people, you can't do good work. Yeah. And then we need to manage good money too, because we're yeah. a business. Otherwise we're not going to be able, uh, to survive. And we love doing crazy stuff. So when you when you make money, you can do crazy stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so that so that's why that's my my three things that I manage all the time. But because of COVID now, uh, I realized that most of the conversation is about money, and then suddenly most of the, about the conversation is about people. If they are happy, save their job make sure their family are okay. So suddenly everything changed. And I realized that uh, being in Canada, you could see the impact of a government. Uh, you could see the impact of your, your, your leaders, the difference between Europe, the, the, the difference between Canada and the States. All those systems are different. There's yeah. an impact on the people. And when we realize very quickly that uh, it's good to be Canadian <laughs> when COVID hits. <laughs> it's good to be Canadian. So, uh, so that's my that was my 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 past months. Uh, I have to say, and, and we're 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 getting there. We're happy. <laughs> It's yeah, cool. no, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I love your point of view. And, you know, we, we, we often think a similar way. I, I often talk to my team about a Venn diagram of three things. And, the, you know, I've always said it's about the creativity. It's what we got in this to do. But we need to understand money and we need to understand how to build creativity and not be scared of that. Um, and then, you know, I always say, which sounds like the same thing to you, is that to remember that this is life as well as work. And that's, that's the people element, isn't it? And I think, you know, for, for, from an outsider's point of view, Sid Lee seems to to do that very well um, in terms of, you know, the culture that you're 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 creating. But also, like you said, you know, if if you understand the the commercial aspects of the work, you're able then to to do the creativity that you want to do. And I think from from again from an outsider's perspective, you know, you you have the Sid Lee Collective, and you know where you where you do your self initiated work and. You know, I, I've always, having talked to lots of creative people, self-initiated work then brings the type of work that you want to attract. Um, and yeah, I, I suppose I, I'm interested to hear a little bit more about how that, does that generate the work that you want to do and, you know, you know how you guys approach that internally? Um, if we're talking about Sidley Collective specific, Sidley Collective is, is, is a project where we, we, we fuel personal projects uh, and make it happen. Um, so it came again one morning, someone was knocking at my door and always, hey, Phil, do you have two seconds? I would like to show you my pictures. I would like to show you my new book, my new album. Uh, and I realized, oh, there's so much talent inside Sidley that we need to do something with that. So we, we, we started Sidley Collective and basically we were picking some of these projects and put the money in and try to make it happen. Yeah, and and it's great because it, it brings energy uh, to the to the agency, but at the same time, it's a little bit of an R and D mm. because you realize slowly that okay, you you move into uh, into industrial design, you move into uh, music, you move into filmmaking, you move into other creative discipline around Sidley, and, and Sidley is is about breaking boundaries between disciplines so so it was great to to try to to tap in those in the, in those talent but at, at the same time it, it's really hard to to maintain as a project because it's a lot of money it's a lot of hours yeah. uh and sometimes people they want to spend more time on their personal project than on on the regular <laughs> business <laughs> so but every every year we do like a creative riot we 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 take all those crazy ideas and we yeah. select them and we'll try to make them happen and, and it is great to 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 see um pure pure idea that comes from your people and, and let's let's try to do it let's try to break boundaries and let's try to do it so I think it's it's a bit of our R and D. It's a yeah. bit of culture, 
Yeah. And at the same time, uh, I, I, I think it's, um, if you're a creative, uh, you need to, to step out of your comfort zone um, every time, every time. And sometimes we, we do more of the same and we, yeah. we, we're, we're not inspiring anymore and we're, we're, we're not great anymore. So by the fact that we're pushing people try to do other stuff, uh, then it creates so much energy into the agency. Yeah, and what's your what's your most favorite project that you've done that that's come out of that? Um, <clears throat> me personally, my my personal project. Well, or just just you know, which which is the favorite one that, oh, that, that that's come uh, out of Sidley that you you've you've, you've thought that that was it? <laughs> uh, uh, me me me. Uh, there, there's two projects. I'll I'll talk about one project. It's mm. called um, Suck. Uh, it was a collection of chair. Uh, a writer at the agency was was always complaining about long meetings and we have more and more meetings. So he said, why don't we design a chair that is so uncomfortable <laughs> that you don't want to stay in the meeting? <laughs> so he had like no design skill. He's a writer and yeah. a very good writer, no design skill. He came up with a collection of chair that it's slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> so uh, he, he teamed up with a, a group of designer and we designed the collection and we put that collection into our boutique in Amsterdam, and we won many award for uh, in Milan for <laughs> designing this, that collection. It's 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 great yeah. because it came from an inside, yeah. uh, from the office, from someone I've never done um, design before. Team up with other buddies in the agency, and we actually did something, and we got awarded for it. That's even funnier. <laughs> um, that's one project. The other project is a personal project where I think it changed um, my creative vision uh, of Sidley is in 2000, um, 2005, I was invited to be part of um, a theatrical experience uh, in Quebec City. Uh, the director, Robert Lepage, called me in on a project. I used to work with Robert on Cirque du Soleil, and he called me in on this project and he said, so let's let's do like a projection on a building that it's going to be a, like a mile long mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be the story about the Quebec City. Uh, so it, it was a project that took me like three wow. years. Um, and by working with so many different disciplines and see the final output, it changed all my creative, all my creative mm -hmm. point of view, how we work at Sidley, how we embrace other discipline. What's the behavior are our creative leaders with that? So it really changed the way we were a creative company because of this project. And it was a silly, it was it was a personal project. It was not yeah. like a brief from a client. No. So there's always good reason to do great stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, fantastic. Um yeah. I, I suppose I, er, earlier on, um, Phil, you mentioned, you know, um, you know, trying to find the right talent for Sidley and for, you know, the, you know, I, I suppose how how do you approach that and how do you know how, how do you find the best people? How do you you know how how do you define that you know what the best people are in today's world? It's um, it's it's a bit part of instinct too at the same times because I I remember when I was studying I was not the first the best designer uh in the class uh there was probably maybe three four five designer bef better than me but i was looking uh, i was probably a misfit back in the days because i came from the science program and i was supposed to be an ocean biologist and then i went into design and so definitely i was a misfit but i, I think i brought something refreshing to the discipline because of that without knowing yeah. and uh so what i'm looking when I, I'm, I'm recruiting people is not the f the best one but probably the misfit probably the third one the one in the corner the one that really wants to fight to, to make something different to yeah. break boundaries and try other discipline so i'm really looking at um uh, um those people, I, and I remember one night uh, we we have uh, we have a Sydney Land program. It's all the intern that comes, and there's a lineup of people out there trying to get their their way in into Sydney. And 
there was someone who got rejected from uh, the first screening and I was having a drink and he didn't know who I was and I didn't know who he was. So I was asking him, can I see your work? And he started to show me his work. And, and I was looking at the work and I said, that's great, but you're so amazing as a person that I'm sure you're going to be an amazing creative at Sidley. And we hired that person and he's one of the top creative today at Sidley. But I, I really believe in, in the potential of people, uh, the fact that they come from a different background, yeah. what they have in terms of culture in their pack sack, um, well-traveled people, well-educated, love food, uh, love to, uh, uh, to try other things, uh, love different discipline. So yeah. I'm really open into that category of people. No, it's not fantastic. easy to find. I have no, to say, yeah. <laughs> because I, I, school, they, they, you know, they built all of the same people in schools. Mm-hmm. No, good point. And you know, I, I suppose that the challenge for 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 many graduates at the moment, um, you know, they they face in some ways they've got you know a, a bit of a harder challenge than than the main, many of us had um, in starting their career. And I know that we've got a lot of young listeners, like young creative people. And I suppose have you got any tips for how they can, you know, how they can find their way into the creative industry, or how they can stand out at the moment, or you know, just anything that I suppose if you were you were giving some advice to them right now um, that, that you feel could be helpful. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> right now it's got, it's kind of a special moment. Uh, but I think it's the best time for young ones. I know it's hard. I know. Yeah. Totally agree with that. I have a son. Uh, he's 23. He's in the house right now. He's been working his ass off all the time uh, on Zoom. But it's the time to try things. This is how we start Sidley in the beginning because um, we were like two high school buddy, uh, and back in in in, in Montreal in early 90s, there were like no job, the economy went, went down, uh, really, really hard to find a job. It was impossible actually for two, mm-hmm. two students to find a job in Montreal. So we, we got rejected in all agency. Um, and finally, we said to ourselves, why don't we start our own agency and why don't we do what we love to do? Mm-hmm. So we start by doing stuff and we did like very terrible clients, like we had like corner restaurant and, and, and car dealership and really bad logos and everything for a buck. But we did something and we learned uh, the craft. We learned the industry. We learned the reality of a client, the reality of making a dollar, the reality of paying your, your space, uh, the reality of uh, the responsibility of hiring your first person in the agency. That's all learning. Uh, so I believe that we we were in that position because there was no job. I think a lot of young young ones right now, uh, they should try to start their own company. They should try to gather up with other friends and try to do something. Uh, I think it's the best moment because you have nothing to lose, everything to gain. Uh, yeah. You don't have you don't have a house, you don't have a car, you don't have kids. You just have like probably a bicycle and. Lots of time on your hands. Um, so I, I think the first thing, you you have to go out, do stuff. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not at, in school, probably it's your in your creative community. Probably it's from with other friends. Try to do some special, special project to help others too. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of people that need helps right now. Uh, and I believe that creative people could 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 change their life uh, yeah. if we could put energy in it. So yes, you have energy, you have nothing to lose, you have all the world in front of you. So just go out there and do the do. You just have to do it, you know. Yeah, great advice. Great advice. Thanks, Phil. Um, so I, I suppose the, the future, Phil, what, what does the future look like for, for Sid Lee? What does the future look like for creativity and kind of agency model? Mm. You know, I suppose we're seeing we're seeing lots of change. Um, you know, there, there's, you know, there's been like a censure by Droga. There's been, you know, there, I, I suppose I'm interested to see where, where you feel the kind of creative landscape is going and the agency model. Yeah. Well, I, I think there's no better time for creativity right now. I think it's a very, very exciting time that we live in. Uh, Michael Birkin, uh, our CEO at, at, at Q, um, 
uh, I had a, a breakfast a couple of years ago, and he was talking about the Renaissance. You know, when the the Renaissance came in, it changed the world. All the artists, all the creative people, really changed the way we look at things. Uh, and I think we're living a Renaissance right now. I think because of technology, because of uh, of of the way we buy goods, the way we we interact with services, with everything is changing in the value chain right now. Yeah. Um, so I think we're living a creative renaissance where creative people are at the center of change. Uh, more and more, uh, we see uh, impact from creativity into our world. So I believe that uh, there's going to be a lot of new creative agency in the world that will that will come around different discipline. Uh, I don't really believe that the traditional advertising agency will survive. I think it will morph into other creative company um, and they have to do it fast uh, for sure. But at the same time, I, I, I think having fashion designers and, and food designer and, 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 and have biochemists uh, into the mix will make the future economy because I believe that uh, the future economy is about being responsible, about being circular, about doing something good for the future. So we'll need good creative people around that. So if I have to say the future of Sidley, it will be more discipline, uh, a bigger creative community around one thing that they really believe in on, on the one value. Um, and I think we'll, we'll probably help a lot of clients to 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 go into that new world probably and it's going to be exciting but it's not going it's not going to come from an art director and a copywriter it's going to come from storytellers designer tech architects uh all those the mix of the people the magic will happen Hmm. Fantastic. Um, and now I apologize because I didn't ask you this question beforehand and it can sometimes be a difficult question to, 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 to you know, articulate, but you know, you've grown a world-class brand and a world-class business and, and, and you grow brands, you know, for clients day in, day out, and you have done for many years. I'm interested to how you articulate what branding is in today's world. I mean, it's never been more valuable than, you know, and I'm just... I understand. I'm just keen to understand how you describe it. If, if someone was to ask you to, to describe what brand or branding is, well, branding right now it's it's an experience. It's an experience, and more and more you have experience from walking into a store, opening a packaging, uh, uh, seeing an ad on TV or a post, or everything is about an experience. So a brand. A brand today needs to give the best experience to, to the consumer and reduce the friction. Because uh, if you have a hard time opening a packaging, if you have a hard time going to a shop, if you have a hard time ordering something online, mm-hmm. or if a brand give you a hard time as a consumer, <laughs> or uh, that's really hard, that's the friction. So I, I, I think every brand right now in the world um, needs to, to invest into their brand experience to make sure that it's very fluid, there, there's no friction. Sure. Um, and at Sidley, what we do best is that we build brand. We create those brand moments, those brand experience, and then we do brand expression all the time. We push, push, push to make sure that when, when, you, when you have an experience with a brand, it really fits the value of the community that we're trying to build. Hmm. So I, I think brand right now I have a lot of responsibility more than any time because they, they have to be responsible. They have to be sustainable. They have to be part of the change, the new world that we're going to live in. Uh, I am, I'm a strong believer of circular design and how we, we could create something that will change the future. Yeah. Um, it has to be part of a circular economy. So being a brand Right now, there's more than just selling and be cool. It's it's more about being responsible. Make sure that you're creating a community around your brand that supports you all the time. Yeah. So, basically, it's you have to be nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 you've nailed it. It's, it's yeah, I like, it's, it's more about more than being cool. It's about being yeah. responsible. Yeah, yeah. You have to be super responsible. And, yeah. and more and more, I'm seeing more clients coming at Sidley, and they want to change. 
and they know that they need to change because the dollar that the consumer have right now is the future of their company. So they have to be responsible for it. Yeah, well, I think that's a, a lovely place to, to to leave the podcast today, Phil. Yes. I, I want to <laughs> thank you so much for you know you being um, generous with your time. Um, you know, hugely inspirational to me and to I'm sure all of our listeners as well. So um, thanks to everyone for listening. If you want to support the podcast, please do rate and write us a review to help us get the word out. We publish a new episode on the last Monday of every month. So make sure you're subscribed. Phil, thanks again. Yeah. And Thank see you, you next time, Andrew. everyone. Thank you, Andrew. I think it's, it's very, very inspiring. Thank you. Thanks so much. 